Good afternoon, St. Londers. How are you? I sincerely hope that you are all very well, given the circumstances that prevail in the country, the many bizarre goings-on, and the very many bizarre goings-on in the world today. I am seething as I sit here making this video, boiling with rage. I've just held a long conversation with somebody in this dorp who knows more about what's going on than the majority, the overwhelming majority of people. <clears throat> he's, I would say, the most well-informed person in the dorp, but let's say he's in the top three or five or seven or nine. <coughs> he knows what's cooking and I am on all of the WhatsApp groups for this dorp, Van der Kloof, here on the Van der Kloof Dam on the Orange River, part of the Renosteberg municipality, which is composed of Van der Kloof, the town immediately to our south on the R48, uh, 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 Petrusville, and the town beyond it before you get to the R, uh, Phillipstown. <clears throat> we are having prepaid electricity meters installed by a private company on risk. In other words, a tender was put out on e-tender. This company responded to it and won the contract to install meters not on immediate payment, but on risk. So they will take a cut forever and ever and ever. Good for them. Nice money if you can make it. Annuity income. <whistles> nice money if you can make it. That's a way to get rich. Annuity income, where you, you invest once. It takes you a few years to pay the investment off. You know, it might cost you whatever, a million rand, to install all of the meters. You get the bank to finance you. And after five years on a commercial loan of 60 months, you've paid off that money, that loan, the costs of the meters and their installations. And the rest is profit for mahala, for ever. Everybody does it. Annuity income business models are practiced all around the world. There's nothing wrong with it. However, nobody on those groups or among the very well-informed people with whom I knock around had any idea that this was coming. We all know there's nobody watching this video or making this video who doesn't know that there are times in marital relationships, in relationships with children, relationships with parents, relationships with employers and teachers, and <clears throat> that sometimes when something is not said, it's not an accident, especially when there was a lot of opportunity and there were many people, as in 7, 9, 12, 15, 20, who could have said something. But this came as a surprise to this entire dorp. Meaning that it was deliberately kept a secret. End of story. Which means that it's skelem. Skelem. I am seething. Because this goes to part of the reason why I am at St. Londres. Many of you know the story. Mr. Miller knows it so well that he could possibly recite it better than I could. The other day, <laughs> this is a, a digression. Mr. Miller and I and Vessel Skierper held a long meeting. For, I don't know how long it was. It could have been four hours, three and a half hours three hours and some change. And at one point, he asked me to 
repeat an anecdote to Vessel Skippers. And for a second, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was completely blank. And I was scuttling. <laughs> it took me a while to remember the story. I'd just forgotten about it. Um, but as I say, that's a complete digression. It's just a, another example of where the person who experienced something doesn't remember it as well as the person who heard the story. And uh, the, the story, the real story that I want to say, mention now is that, uh, as Mr. Miller would be able to tell you, my journey to Saitlanders began when I was nine years old. End of story. No two ways about it. And anybody who knows the story would not hesitate to say, well, yes, I've heard the story. It's, you know, what he's saying is it's unbelievable, but it's very true. I didn't know. Nobody knew. Only God knew that the... You know, the kind of the, the last portion of the story, or the second to last, or the third to last, depending upon how you want to look at it, would involve Saitlanders. But I knew when I was nine years old that one day I would be involved in the cause that, I've been, that I'm involved in now. And you could say it's because of that experience at nine years of age or you could say that it began with the um the the first time i read one of um adrian Sneeman's books about sina van rensburg when my eldest son was born on the 17th of february 2001 O oh blessed day of god <clears throat> you could also say that it has a lot to do with the personal indignation that, <clears throat> that aggregated and accrued and built up in me over the period of my dealings with the new South Africa generally and with the African National Congress and with various individuals. Notwithstanding that some of those individuals are truly grand people. It's easy to judge, very easy to judge. But I tell you that some of the people that I met along the way in those shady, dodgy, dishonest, devious, deceitful, double-dealing, duplicitous environments were good people. Nevertheless, that's not the point. Yesterday I was thinking about making videos and I, I remembered about, I was involved in the theft of some money. The budget, <laughs> the budget for the, it was for a national project. I can't say too much or I'll, you know, and I, I can assure the, the people who might be offended by the story and a hundred others that I've partially told or may tell or could tell. I don't, I don't cross the line. I don't. I don't give the secrets away. And nobody has ever seen. I've never shared with anybody any of my copies of the original documents, both soft and hard, stored all over the show. Um, but the budget for this national project, which I promise you, you don't know happened. It was a national project and it was of great importance in terms of the new South Africa rainbow nation. It was 110 million rand, of which 2 million rand, I know because I reconciled budgets, was spent on the project. 108 million of 110 million rand was stolen. Dinkum. And I used to go to, I used to attend Parkhurst, um, uh, the church, man, it had two names. And for a long time, it was, there was a congregation that collapsed. And so that uh, church sold it to another church. They took over the church building. So it became, let's say, from Methodist to Presbyterian. <coughs> and 
I'm having a brain freeze now, but for a long time it was known by the old congregation's name. Anyway, I used to see my, my pastor and go to meetings and what have you, and I would mention how distressed I was, not as a good person, as a ruffian, as a guy who was known as a, a naughty boy in Johannesburg, but who was attempting to repent of his wicked ways. So not to, not to sound grand or, 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 or holier than thou or sanctimonious, as if I, was, I had every right to judge everybody because, you know, I was a good guy. Not at all. I was the black sheep out and out, the rough diamond. But still, I was so horrified by what was just considered another day at the office that I would go to, I'd speak to my pastor about it and I, I would, man, it was like a Roman Catholic confessional, whether or not you believe in them. As somebody who was brought up a Roman Catholic, I can tell you that they have some benefit. The ability to be able to go to somebody and tell them your most wicked sins or the things most troubling your heart in absolute private. You know what a confessional is. It's that box that's split in half. The priest sits on one side and he, there's a, it's split in half, but there's a grill of about that big between the priest and the, and the, con, uh, the uh, I can't think of the word at the moment, the priest is called the confessor. <clears throat> and the, the rite is called confession. And the place is called a confessional. I'm trying to think what the, the uh, confessing party is called. Anyway, it's a, it's a handy thing. Um, to unburden, and that's what I was doing. I was unburdening my conscience of the guilt. These oaks are such skebengas, you have no idea. Please believe me. Believe me. A report doesn't know. I once did an event, and so somehow, I got a call from a journalist at the Sunday Times. And she tried to wheedle out of me the, the scandal of this event. And I refused to tell her. But I gave her some tidbits. I said, look, I'm not going to give you your story. Her, her surname was Scott, I believe. Somebody Scott. Mary, I have a feeling that it was a, began with an M, maybe Megan Scott. Anyway, I said, I'm not going to give you your story. You can forget about it. I value my life too highly, which is the same reason why I don't give details of these anecdotes that I tell from time to time on, uh, in the videos. I said, but know this and know it well. <laughs> they stole 8 billion rand. It's mathematics. 8 billion minimum or more. And this woman was staggered. She was staggered. This was uh, 15 years ago. 15 years and two months ago. She couldn't get over it. Because at that time, you know, 15 years ago, New South Africa, 2007... Rainbows, peace, feel bad, whites are guilty. It's only in recent years that people have begun to say blatantly things like, how is it that ESCOM now has, this is a random example, 40,000 employees producing half of what 15,000 employees produced previously when 10,000 of the 15 were white of whom 5,000 have been pushed out. In other words, <laughs> uh, 
In other words, 35,000 blacks can't do what 10,000 whites and 5,000 blacks could do then. You know, these sorts of things, these anecdotal, anecdotal reactions that people are having. And they're having them on every street corner. You know it. You, you, you. Even if you're a liberal in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg, you say it in such a way that nobody can allege that it was racist, that you're a racist. But you're talking about these things. How did the ANC, how did, how did this happen? Golly gee, we've got no power. <coughs> and the implication of it is that the deployed cadres of the African National Congress, which is overwhelmingly black, and whose deployed cadres are overwhelmingly black, just can't do it, man. They can't do it. They can't do it. They can't do it. Exceptions aside, there will always be exceptions. There will always be kakslag blankers. People that interfere with their own children and who, I mean, sometimes their fault, sometimes not their fault. I mean, if they were, if they were catamites, forced to be catamites. A catamite is the, is the child in, in a pedophilia scenario, the catamite is the child. then how can you blame them for turning out sick? But what I'm saying is that there, there, there are good black people, there are bad black people, there are good white people, there are bad white people, but <clears throat> some people will say it in blunt terms and other people will say it in a circumlocutory way. Perhaps even managing in the process to bulldust themselves that there not, are no implications of the sort that I've just described in what they say. And there are. And you know it. Nevertheless, we've got this blooming, these prepaid meters coming in. Some time ago, I was in a shop here. And somebody was, I can't remember how it happened, but... For one reason or another, I said to one of the, the bigwigs of the region, I will not pay my electricity as long as I know that the money is being stolen as soon as it is being received. Just remember, ladies and gentlemen, the very many videos I've made in the past about what happened at this municipality. The pensions have not been paid. They've been subtracted from the wages. Skills development levy, workmen's compensation fund, and what's the other one that they take off? Man, I can't think. Those four items have been deducted from the employees' salaries but not paid over since September 2017. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. October, November, December, January, it's going on for February. For five and a half years, they have stolen that money off their employees' paychecks. And besides that, they stole about 100 million rands worth of payments made by the DORP, the citizens, the residents, for electricity that was never passed on to ESCO. About a hundred million rand. Nobody as far as I know knows precisely what is the number. So ESCOM cut us off and it gave us Strafkrach. And then it gave us another thing called NMD. I don't even fully understand it, but it's to do with the transformers capacity and how much electricity we're permitted to consume at any time. I'm just telling you that there was a path that was walked and I said to this guy in this shop, I will not pay, I will not pay, I will not pay as long as I know that it is being stolen as I pay it. 
if push when push comes to shove if push comes to shove <clears throat> i've got like nine payments that i paid just you know to say that i've paid them that are not registered even now on my accounts these oaks haven't a clue who owes what but if it came to paying to having to pay i could find the money in about i want to say 10 minutes let's say three days that's not the problem <clears throat> the problem is the principle so now we've got these meters coming in whereby you can't avoid paying i'm going to have to pay fortunately my electricity bill is peanuts i use about 350 units a month at 2 rand 39 what is that i actually used a completely wrong number the other day in a different video that i did uh 2.3 now for which i apologize so i think it's 239 is the is the current rate times three five zero equals 836 rand a month compared to some people that's nothing but i'm watch me watch me what i do now they can they can put in their meter which compels me to pay meaning that the 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 the, the, the municipality will be able to resume stealing money i am going to go off escom altogether finished and clear i will not pay money to people who steal it as soon as they get it this whole thing is so scalem and the fact that nobody saw fit to tell us is the smoking gun so this guy who's putting in the meters i've just met him as it happens and he can do he can do his thing on risk he's going to make a killing for ever <laughs> good business if you can make it but i'm telling you qui bono qui bono qui bono qui bono who stands to benefit who is benefiting for whom is this a good thing this initiative was not taken for the sake of the right thing this initiative was not undertaken it was not initiated for altruistic and benevolent reasons a killing is going to be made by a lot of people escom is going to be left standing with its finger in its nose again and the residents mm, 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 mm. it means i don't know really i don't know but i am going to and it's going to take a lot because i don't have a big solar system i've got a five kilowatt inverter two uh yes actually uh, two lithium batteries of this kind of roughly what you might call the standard size my paneling is good i've got nine 360 watt panels and given that we have you know about 364 days a year of sunshine here in the Karua, and that the summer days are very long and that the winter days are especially clear i'm sorted for panels my uh inverter is a, a little bit small you know but it's not bad the batteries are about a quarter of what i would like to have i would like to have eight of those lithiums because then if if you have problems for days on end you you're okay you know that's, that's the way to be sorted but i don't i'm not going to go and take a bank loan i could if i wanted to to buy more lithium batteries you can forget about it <clears throat> they're expensive they're, they're so what i'm gonna do to poke my finger in the eyeball of this 
matter. Because I am going to go totally off grid. The only thing that's on grid at present is the supplementary supply. <clears throat> In other words, when the sun is not shining, I take electricity from ESCOM. And my stove is on ESCOM, it's on the grid. I'm going to go off totally. And if that means that some days I can't even work, no problem. I'll read. I've got books here, you know, for work that, that will empower me with knowledge to be able to engage with conservatives around the world to do the work that I do for Saitlanders as the head of the, the foreign department, off dealing Betelots, foreign section, if you like. <clears throat> if I have to skip a couple of days of videos... If I know that I've got a big interview coming up and I can't take any chances, then for, and it's rainy or cloudy or whatever, then for a couple of days I'll put no strain on those batteries. I'll use nothing. Um, I can do this. This I can do. But what I'm not going to do is pay my money to thieves. I watched this happen for decades. I was deeply involved in it. I never profited by a cent. But I was, you know, you know, you see these murder mystery stories and it turns out there's a bit of a conspiracy. Two or three people were involved in the murder. Sherlock Holmes, you know. And it turns out that one of the people gained nothing by it, but they were still involved in taking another person's life. They must hang. That was me. I was, that was wicked. What I was involved in was wicked. And I saw enough of it to put me off it for life. I'm not saying I'm go that I am as pure as the driven snow or that I will be as pure as the driven snow. I'm not that guy. I'm not the, you know. But... That is revolting. It is revolting. Watching people steal other people's money. It's just... Oh, no, it's just stealing. May, may, may the good Lord protect all of us from it. May the good Lord... I beg your pardon for looking out of the window. Somebody reprimanded me this morning for being distracted while I do videos. <coughs> you know, they said it doesn't look good, and I'm sure that they're correct. I have a habit, have had, lifelong, of being easily distracted, of my mind being here and my eyes being there, or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, these oaks are rough, I'm telling you. But the pebble bed modular reactors are coming. They are coming. I think that the biggest... What, what is apparent now is that the ESCOM thing is designed to fail. The um, that ESCOM... That, th that those people who told me and whom I dismissed for it, many of you will be watching this video because about a hundred of you have sent me WhatsApp messages mentioning this. So you were right and I was wrong. Who told me that ESCOM is being set up for failure so that African Rainbow Power, owned by Patrice Motsepe, Cyril Ramaphosa's brother, can pick up the pieces. They are going to be livid over Afri Forum's pebble bed modular reactor initiative. <whistles> they must be incensed. Because that's, that's, at the end of the day, the answer. <clears throat> and I just heard now that apparently Afri Forum is three years into the work. 
That company, Pebble Bed Modular Reactors, were invented by four or five young Afrikaner lighties from, from uh, Port of Strom. Pukka. This is, the, I'm telling you a fact. And when they invented the technology, it was considered such a groundbreaking thing in the world that, that they got investment and interest from all over the world. And in fact, apparently, Pebble bed modular reactors are being planned to, for installation in the USA now. This was, comes from the 80s. Their company eventually shut down in uh, 2010, I believe. It was just a gradual lack of interest. But now they've resuscitated the technology and what have you, for Af Afriforum's sake, for the past three years. And as I say, it's being done now in the USA, apparently, apparently, I don't know, allegedly, let's say. So they're three years into this thing. Hmm. It cannot come soon enough, that's all I can say. And in the next few days, I, Simon Roche, shall disconnect myself from the grid forever. I shall not pay money to thieves who are stealing from me as I pay it, or stealing from the end recipient as I pay. Okie dokes, everybody. Thank you very much for watching this video. Yeah. We live in serious times, guys. These are the practical realities. These Tenders are being handed out for gain all across South Africa. The theft is now not only rampant but systemic. People use overuse the word systemic nowadays. Generally, when somebody says, oh, it's systemic, systemic problem. In fact, it has got nothing to do with the system. It's a stupidly overused word. But this is systemic theft. We are setting up a system, not from which we can th thieve, not from which we can steal, like the previous system as they did. That was not systemic. That was a parasite on the system. The system was not inherently the problem it's a billing system between a municipality and that's not inherently theft but this system is being put in so that the same people who stole before can steal now as they are doing don't say to me they're not doing it that was then this is now as we speak the deductions are being made from the employees' salaries and not passed on to the Pension Fund, Skills Development, Levy, Workplace Compensation Fund, UIF, that's the one I couldn't think of, Unemployment Insurance Fund. Now they are. they come up with a system to serve that same end again. It is systemic theft. Yeah, 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 Mensa. Thank you very much. Goodbye and God bless all of you.